everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are in 2 Kings chapter 22 and 23 and 2 Chronicles chapter 34 and 35. Uh, these stories are similar in nature. Um, they follow the same character, Josiah, King Josiah. Um, and what's interesting today is we're kind of thinking about, um, like if you've ever had an instance or maybe several instances in your life where you're like thinking you're doing great, you're trucking along and then you like all of a sudden come to realize like, oh shoot, I mean, I like kind of had the right idea, but I'm like so far off and I've got a lot of work to do to get to be where I need to be. And I think uh, Josiah is a great example of that today as we're reading through. So Josiah is the king. He is a little boy. He's eight years old when he takes the throne, which is crazy to me. That is like literally our son. (laughs) We have an eight-year-old son and to think of him as a king is kind of nuts. But um, anyway, he takes the scene. And what's interesting is that kind of going with that idea that we were talking about of like, you're going along doing the right thing, or at least you think you are, and then realize like (laughs) something just comes unfolded that you didn't realize. You're like, oh, wow, big picture. I was totally off. Um, I think King Josiah is a good example of that throughout what he experiences, but also thinking of him as a child. um, He's like super naive and probably very young in his thinking and I think as he grows as a king he has a lot of those just like natural moments of oh I thought I knew what I was talking about and clearly there's more to learn or more to be said about whatever yeah it, you kind of get the sense that I mean probably Josiah had some pretty um good counselors around mm-hmm, him mm-hmm. that that wanted to make sure that he was um I don't know, kinging the right way, <laughs> uh, reigning the right way. It seems like maybe Hilkiah is kind of in that boat. It seems like maybe, I think his name was Shaphan is kind of in that boat. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens to them is that Josiah wants them to fix up the temple. And this would be the first cue that things have really gone off the rails. While they're fixing up the temple, they discover the book of Deuteronomy, basically. <laughs> so worship <laughs> worship has gotten so far off the rails that they didn't even know where God's mm-hmm. word was. And so they read it for the first time, and you get the feeling that many people are hearing it for the first mm-hmm. time. And I, I think you get to that part of Deuteronomy that is blessings and curses, And King Josiah is like, oh, my goodness, we don't want Mm -hmm. these curses to happen to us. Well, I think even that is like a a good first example of what we're talking about. Like, you're starting to do the right thing. Like, he obviously wants to rebuild the temple and kind of get back to square one. But in so doing, like, uncovers something that's like, oh, wow, I thought we were on the right track with, like, taking down all these idols and doing all these good things. But now here's this whole book of stuff that we are so far off. Yeah, it is. It is really interesting. I really like the example you're using where he's he's just doing one good thing, fixing up the temple. Mm -hmm. And then he reads the book and is like, oh, my goodness. (laughs) And so when we do house projects. (laughs) Yeah. One (laughs) one thing leads to the other, leads to the other, leads to the other. And then you get this kind of summary in second the like the middle. No, kind of the beginning of second Kings 23, that is all the horrible things that exist in Israel and Judah. And they're, they're pretty shocking. I mean, there, there's I think the... it's like a lot of like byproducts of Manasseh and yep. Amnon reigning before. So Josiah has to go on like this uh, journey of destroying <laughs> idolatrous things. And you also get the feeling that he didn't realize how much he was going to have to bite off mm-hmm. um, because it seems like the idolatry is just endless. He has to like destroy the places where people go to sacrifice their kids, uh, which means that was a regularly attended place. Uh, He has to kick out all the male prostitutes that were living in God's temple. Uh, That seems like that's kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, He has to cut down all the high places. He has to destroy all the Asherah poles and all the graven images. And many of these things were set up in places that were supposed to be holy before God. Mm -hmm. Um, There's even like he has to destroy these horses that were... Uh, dedicated to, to the, the sun, sun. Uh, which was a common practice in Assyria. So probably they were trying to do that to gain favor with Assyria. Um, but you do kind of get like, oh, Josiah, he just wanted to fix up the temple and he ended up having right. to destroy yeah. literally all the cultural things of Israel. 
um, which is interesting because he chooses the right thing. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't he doesn't um, take scope of what's before him and say, yeah, that that is too hard. I could never do that. Um, so I think there is some encouragement there in that Josiah decides to stick to it and honor the Lord no matter how difficult it's going to be. And that is an inspiring part of this story uh, because God does see Josiah's heart. Mm-hmm. And I think what's crazy too is like he was a really good testament of a very good king. It says in, uh, I think it was, I feel like it was Second Kings. That it's could be Second Kings twenty three verse twenty five. I think is where you're going. Thank you. Uh, is that where it says that he? Before, followed after before him there was yes. no, no king like them who turned to the lord with all his yes. heart and with all his soul and with all his might which is actually mm-hmm. a reference to deuteronomy according to all the law of moses nor did any like him arise after him well i think that's very telling because he was very unique as a king and he was dedicated to making those changes like it wasn't like all at once cuz he was willing to make that first step and then when he f- saw like what the expectation was it was like okay we're gonna like we're gonna chisel out this ugly piece of us and we're gonna chisel out this ugly piece of us and like take away this like rough edge of who we are so that we can get back to loving god and like having relationship with him uh what's ultimately crazy about his story though is that he was still dedicated to that even knowing that like it it talked about like God's anger still burned against them because of the things that Manasseh had done. And so like it was going to be taken over. And ultimately Josiah, King Josiah does die. And it's like this terrible thing because he was such a good king. Uh, He was actually killed. So it's like, it's a crazy story of actual like devout willingness to just like turn it all over to God, regardless of the end circumstance where... God's still going to do what he's going to do. Um, but I think that's like a, a real testament to us too. There's a, there's a couple interesting extra credit in here. One, Josiah finds out that God is going to judge the people, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not going to affect him immediately in his lifetime. Mm-hmm. And he still goes out of his way to honor God on behalf of the people. That is very different than Hezekiah, yeah. who heard that there was going to be judgment eventually. And he says, well, whatever, it's not going to bother me. And Josiah actually seems to advocate for his people. Uh, The other interesting historical extra credit is that there is this odd, like the way Josiah dies is pretty weird. Um, He is in a battle against the Pharaoh of Egypt and he's disguised and gets hit by an archer. Uh, It seems like uh, at this time in history, the Babylonians are coming on the scene. The Assyrians are kind of fading out of the way. Um, the battle that happens is at Megiddo, uh, extra credit. Megiddo is way up high on the mountain. You can oversee like all the valley. It's where the battle of Armageddon is supposed to occur. Uh, you can go visit Megiddo today. And most likely the, the, uh, people of Israel, the people of Judah had taken over Megiddo away from the Assyrians and the Egyptians to try to impress the Babylonians. And Josiah in this battle finds himself kind of pinned between the, the Babylonians and the Medes versus the Assyrians and the Egyptians. So I talked, I think yesterday, about kind of like the changing power structure in the region. And Josiah is a victim of that changing power structure. There is some interesting things in there that different scholars have different beliefs about. Um, It seems like God is speaking through Pharaoh saying, hey, Josiah, get out of here. And Josiah is very committed to still fighting Pharaoh anyway. So it's possible that Josiah had kind of fallen away at the end of his life from honoring God and had like was really taking on more than he was supposed to. Uh, But it's also possible that he was just caught in between this enormous shifting regional powers um, and was just kind of a victim trying to care for his people. Hmm. Well, I think a, a good takeaway in your part for today is kind of thinking back to the beginning where we see Josiah coming onto the scene where he is willing to just like do what was best for his people. But once he realized that what his best was didn't cut it, that he needed to just keep like shaving off those keep like putting rough in the edges. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think that's, that's true of us. Um, there's so many times when I feel like, you know what, I'm doing so great. And like, I am serving the Lord and not that I'm not, but there's always room for growth. I actually recently heard a pastor talking about how like, so much of his life, he felt like he had, he had actually like just accepted Christ and he felt like he was at a really good place. 
And like, there were certain things that God was really like putting on him, like, nope, I got to get rid of this part of my life. And this is not good. I can't keep up with this. I need to get rid of this one part. And once he felt like he was at a good place with that, it was like, he keeps revealing these places where you need to get rid of those like old self and become more like, more like Christ. Uh, I think that's a really good example to us because the Lord's not just going to lay it out for you. Like, here's all the things of your whole life that you're going to do wrong. Like, you have to just like piece by piece, like get rid of those rough edges to just desire to become more like him. And kind of like Josiah, like seeing the book of the Lord, like, oh my gosh, got to get rid of those nasty places and, and serve him well. So uh, thanks for joining us today. We will be back again tomorrow as we venture into... Zephaniah. Ooh, fancy. All right, see you then. <laughs> see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.